Hi everyone, I'm Manuel and I'm here with Ian to talk through how well Jetpack Compose, our new UI toolkit, works with the existing Jetpack libraries you might already be using in your apps. One of the most important parts when designing Compose was that you should be able to incrementally adopt it with your existing apps without rewriting everything from scratch. That means your business and data layers below the UI layer can be used with a shiny new Compose UI. Let's take, for example, this app, Bloom. Bloom is a home garden shopping app that gives users the ability to search through a huge set of plants and look through pre-built collections of related plants. Let's dive into how we could write this screen in Compose instead of using views and XML. All that with the power of Jetpack. In Bloom's case, we've taken heavy advantage of many other Jetpack libraries. If we take a look at the architecture of the app, Bloom uses Room to store the plants in the database, Paging to load them in memory-efficient chunks, View Models for handling UI logic, Kotlin Coroutines flows to expose state and data between each layer, and Hilt as the dependency injection solution. Bloom's home view model serves two main purposes. First, it provides a separation between the state that is exposed to the UI and how that state is produced. It is the view model that is responsible for handling the business logic of the home UI. Second, as it extends the Jetpack view model class, it survives configuration changes, ensuring the latest data is instantly available. The paste list of plants is exposed from the repo layer. And the rest of the UI state for the screen consists of the collections of related plants and signals in case the page is loading or an error needs to be shown. Looking at the home screen, we could break it down into a number of separate composables for each part of our UI, each taking in only the data that it needs. Jumping into the implementation of home screen, we can get an instance of the home view model in a composable by using the view model method. This method is doing two things for you. First, it is automatically scoping the view model to the closest view model store owner. If we were to put our home screen directly in an activity, it would use that. If it was in a fragment, it would use the fragment scope instead. Secondly, it is using the default factory. For an unwritten tree point annotated activity or fragment case, Hilt has already installed itself as the default factory, so our Hilt powered view model works right out of the box. If you aren't using Hilt or any other dependency injection solution, you will need to create the view model factory by hand and pass that into the view model function. In Compose, it is a good idea to prefer composables that don't hold state for better reusability and testability. We call them stateless composables, as opposed to stateful ones that do hold internal state. In this composable, home screen is retrieving an instance of home view model inside the function itself, which makes it a stateful composable. To make it stateless, we should provide the view model as a parameter instead. In this way, we delegate the responsibility of obtaining the view model to the parent, so that this composable can focus on emitting UI. Once we have an instance of the view model, we can collect the UI state flow using the collectAState function. This will re-execute the composable where the state is read and will update the UI accordingly with the new values. If you use live data or RxJava, don't worry. We got you covered as well with the observe a state and subscribe a state functions. We said that we have a lot of plants in Bloom, so using paging to load those in in chunks makes a lot of sense. The paging compose artifact makes it possible to transform our flow of paging data into state that we can use in compose with the collect as lazy paging items method. With that, we can easily display them using a lazy column. Also, by looking at load state, we can easily add our own loading composable to indicate when the data is refreshing and even when we get to the bottom of the screen while more data is being appended onto our list. 
And now, on the home screen, we can call plant list with the data coming from the view model. Before moving on, let's pause to acknowledge that we've been using a lot of Jetpack libraries in our Compose UI without modifying our view model or changing any other layer of our app. That's cool, isn't it? Looking at the design of our app, there is a piece of UI that we might want to reuse in other screens, and that's the Browse Collections Carousel that can be reused for recommendations on a plant detail screen, as you can see here. What's interesting about this carousel is that when you tap on an item, it expands to show plants related to that collection. In its implementation, the carousel needs logic and internal state to expand or collapse itself, as well as handling logic to allow only one collection to be expanded and go to the plant detail screen when the user taps on a plant. Where do we put that logic? In a view model? Well, that's not possible for reusable UI components. Let's dive into this. To make collections carousel reusable, we follow Compose best practices by passing state in and exposing events out. Encapsulating the logic and controlling the state of the composable in a class is a good way to protect the composable from displaying an inconsistent UI and avoid repeating the same code in different places. For the state of collections carousel, we can create a regular class called collections carousel state that takes in the collections as a parameter. It exposes information about whether the carousel is expanded, the selected collection, and the plans to show. And it encapsulates the logic to update the state when a collection is clicked in a single entry point method on collection click. This state is now provided to the composable as a parameter that colors of collections carousel need to create and manage. For events, collections carousel takes one extra parameter, a lambda that is called whenever the user taps on a plant. But you might be wondering, why do we have collections carousel state as a regular class and events to indicate user interactions instead of having all of that in a view model? As a rule of thumb, you would create a view model to host state, handle logic, and process events when the composable is close to the root level of the screen. For example, a home screen or login screen composable. When that's not the case, for example, for reusable composables like a carousel, don't use a view model. Instead, create a regular state holder class to manage state and expose events to the calling function. This is because view models are scoped to either an activity, fragment, or a destination of a navigation graph. Therefore, you can only get one instance of a view model type in that scope. The benefits for view models at screen level composables are that they can survive configuration changes, data can survive process death via safe state handle, it is a better place for state whose life cycle matches the screen, and they have an already built-in coding scope that you can use to trigger your business logic. Going back to the code, as home screen state is managed by home view model, carousel state should be part of the UI state that the view model exposes. Then, that's passed to collections carousel. But what about the navigation event? What should we do with that? And what about the home screen itself? We should be able to apply the same testability and preview capabilities to the whole screen, right? That's absolutely right. We want to be able to write tests against our home screen and pass fake data to a preview without worrying about our view model and collecting state. It's easy enough to make those changes to our home screen. Just add the UI state, the flow of the paged plants, and an on plant click lambda as parameters. While this might not seem like a big deal, we've just pushed the call to view model and collect a state up a level, it makes a big difference when thinking about where this home screen is going to go in relation to everything else in your app. If Bloom was an app with just a single screen, we'd be able to use the set content function to set our composable directly in the activity. But our mocks show a much more complicated app. 
So adding our composable directly to the activity might not be the right approach. A very natural migration path for an existing app when starting to adopt Compose would be to migrate one screen at a time. If you're using fragments, for instance, this home screen could actually be the only content of your home fragment, creating the Compose view directly in on Create View. In this type of approach, you'd use an APIs like Fragment Scenario to test your whole fragment. Once every screen in your app is just a wrapper around a reusable, testable, composable, the next step would be to tie all those screens together with Navigation Compose. The Jetpack Navigation component was built from the start as a generic runtime that knows nothing about any type of destination. This abstraction was then used to build the Navigation Fragment artifact and more recently, the Navigation Compose artifact. This shared runtime means that each of these implementations got out-of-the-box support for building a navigation graph of the screens or destinations in your app via a Colin DSL, automatic scoping of the lifecycle, view models, and save state to each destination, deep linking, returning a result, and integrating with the system back button. In Navigation Compose, there's two main pieces you need, a nav controller and a nav host. The nav controller follows the same pattern we used for the collection's carousel state by allowing you to create the stateful nav controller as a separate object from the nav host that takes the nav controller as input. This allows other components outside of the nav host to react to the current destination changing by using the nav controller as the single source of truth for the state. This is helpful when setting the selected item in a bottom nav bar, for instance. The nav host composable is responsible for adding your composable destination into the compose hierarchy. It's here where you define your navigation graph via a Kotlin DSL. This is a map of all possible destinations in your app. So for our home screen, we can create a home composable destination. You'll note that we declare a route on our home screen. This is the unique path that you use to navigate to that destination. Since this is the main screen of the app, we set it as the start destination of our graph. We've needed to make one change to our code, though. Instead of using view model, we're using the Hilt Navigation Compose's Hilt NavGraph view model method. Like I mentioned, navigation automatically scopes your view models to the individual destination. But since the destination isn't an Android entry point activity or fragment, it doesn't have Hilt's factory as the default factory. The Hilt NavGraph view model method is a convenient wrapper around view model that ensures that the right factory is always set for you. Note that we didn't need to change our home screen at all. It's totally unaware that it is being used within Navigation Compose and can still be tested independently. Of course, the big benefit of Navigation Compose comes when you have more than one screen. That's when the ability to scope the save state and view models to the individual destination ensures the state is created only when is needed and is removed only when you pop the destination off the back stack. In the case of Bloom, the tiny images on the plant list or the expanded carousel should just be a preview for a detail screen that really gives the user an idea of what they can get for their garden. The first step is to build the plant detail screen. 
Just like our home screen, we should build our plant detail screen as a stateless component so that we can use previews and test it in isolation right from the start. You'll note our collections carousel makes another appearance. Building reusable components means not only a more consistent experience for users across your app, but also helps when building out new screens. Next, we need to add the plant detail screen to our navigation graph. This is just another composable destination, but there's one difference here compared to our home screen. We need to know what plant the user selected. The routes in navigation have a lot in common with web URLs in that they're designed to serve as the address of the content we show. This means that our route isn't just plant, but plant with the ID of the plant we want to show using this placeholder syntax. For our plant class, the ID is an integer, so we declare it with the int type. Now, we could extract the ID directly from the backstack entry the nav host passes to our plant detail destination, but we really want that ID in our plant view model, not here. To accomplish this, we can use another API that's part of Jetpack view model, save state handle. A save state handle is really just a fancy key value map, but the important thing is that it's automatically populated by the arguments we put in our route. This allows our view model to pass that ID directly through to our repository to retrieve the plant details and provide that observable flow to the UI. This means that if background loading updates the price of the plant or otherwise changes our single source of truth, our plant detail screen will automatically recompose with the new data. Thanks to Manuel's work on making the home screen stateless, we already have exposed a lambda that's triggered when the user taps on a plant. Our home screen destination then implements that lambda calling navigate with the route of our plant detail screen, filling in the ID. The nav controller takes care of the rest of it, saving the state of the home screen and swapping in the plant detail screen. Hitting the system back button automatically takes you back to the home screen in exactly the state you left it in. We're just scratching the surface of what you can do with Jetpack Compose and all of the integration points with other Jetpack libraries. If you want to learn more, I'd strongly recommend reading through our guide on Compose interoperability and the guide specifically around navigating with Compose in our docs. For practical examples, check out all of our Compose samples and a realistic example of converting an existing app to Compose in the sample app TV. All the links are in the description. Whether you're working on a brand new project in Compose or adapting an existing project, Jetpack is here to help. Thanks.